So I'm here at the Pickaway County Library and I am with... Patty Hamilton and I am running for state representative for the 12th district covering Pickaway County, Madison County, and a little portion of Franklin County. And you want me to go in? I'm, I'm running. <laughs> So let, I'll just cut in there. Um, so I know that you've never really run for office like this before, and you've decided to to jump right into this this one. Why have you done that? Well, um, I truly believe that uh, we need more grassroots candidates. We need people that are just real people out there in the public that are actually concerned about our community. I served our country for 30 years in the Army Reserve. I served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I went on to work at the Pentagon because I did so well in it. Um, and I worked in the office of the Provost Marshal General. I was a military policewoman, and I believe serving our, our nation was a great honor for me, but it also brings me to the community part of it, and I wanna serve our community the same exact way. I've been involved in the Republican Central Committee, Soldiers Monumental Association, Pickaway Ag Society, Pickaway Sportsman's Club, and I just feel that being involved in our community is very good for us, and we should do that. And so it brought me to the point where I had many friends tell me I should run. And um, honestly, um, one of the big things that kind of helped me as well is industrial solar on fertile farmland. Uh, it's, I don't agree with that. I totally disagree with it because we can't just go to the grocery store and pick up uh, goods that are grown. You have to have farmland. You can't just go to the store and think it's gonna appear magically. Um, and I just think that's important. And uh, my dad was a dairy farmer after he got out of the Air Force. And I know what farmers do and how that economic engine is so important for us and for our community. And Pickaway and Madison are agricultural centers for Ohio. And we can't destroy the fertile farmland. It isn't going to get what we need for it. Um, example, the 6,050 acres of uh, for Oak Run Project, industrial solar project, is only going to give 800 kilowatts of, I mean, I'm sorry, 800 megawatts of energy. But a five acre natural gas power plant in Lordstown can give 940 megawatts of energy. That just doesn't even make sense. If you're a business person, you know that. If you're into agriculture as farmers or businessmen, they actually have uh, millions of dollars to deal with. So um, men and women that are doing that job, they definitely understand that that doesn't make sense. So that's really my, my big things. And I'm definitely, um, since I was a school teacher, I believe children and parents' rights are so important. I do not agree with um, critical race theory in schools. I don't agree with, um, you know, the woke agenda at all. I believe that only girls can be in girls sports. Why do girls have to be subjected to uh, boys that think they're girls in their locker rooms? That is unacceptable. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I want to make sure that our children are safe and that our, their education is valued and we maintain a great way of life because our children are, are our future, you know. Um, and it's important to me. Um, so I'm not doing this for me. Um, I'm retired. I own 10 rental homes and my husband and I work on them ourselves. Uh, and so I don't need another job. I'm not running for a paycheck. I don't have big money behind me. I'm just the grassroots person uh, talking to people, wanting to know what's important to them. Is it is important to me? Uh, what I think, you know, are, are we on the same uh, wavelength on that. Um, listening to people is a skill that I feel like I really have and taking those concerns and translating them into legislation and uh, being there for the people and being the voice in Columbus for the people of the counties is really important and that's kind of really a big thing and I think that um, you know we talk about uh, foreign foreigners coming into our country illegally all those illegals um, they're, they're allowing uh, non-citizens to buy our land. That's unacceptable. It not only causes a national security problem, but it also causes a problem of Americans wanting to have land, buying farms, buying houses. It takes away our economic prosperity. Um, we're supposed to have life, liberty, and the being able to be prosperous. It's not 
that's not going to happen if we continually give it away to other illegals that come into our country and not become citizens and become an American because it needs to be America first, Ohio first. Those are important things and we need to think of the citizens that are there. So, Where do you stand on other conservative um, topics, say like abortion? Um, I know that it, um, inflation is a big thing right now, you know, and property taxes in Pickaway County raised about 30%, right? Right. Well, first, abortion, I'm a pro-life person. I truly believe that we need to save the life of the baby. There are too many people out there that want to have children and they can't for whatever reason and they want to love a child and to raise a child themselves. There is nothing wrong with, um, you know, not doing an abortion and, and uh, being there and giving that child to somebody else. I know that would probably be very difficult, but on the alternative, um, you know, killing a baby and not allowing them to grow, Planned Parenthood has always pushed that. They think that's the only choice that women have. Um, and if that's what a woman wants to decide, that's fine. They can decide that the law, the laws are still there. Government shouldn't be in the way. We shouldn't have to pay for it then either. So if government is not going to do that, we don't want to pay for it. And I believe that that's important. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, we should uh, allow that to happen. And I, I'm diabolically opposed to that. Uh, I, when I was pregnant with my last son and I gave birth to him, I met a young lady who had had abortions and she wanted to have children and at, she was in the hospital at the time and she had just given birth to a set of twins because she had had two or three abortions beforehand and wasn't able to get pregnant then. Then she had to use in vitro to get pregnant and she ended up with a set of twin girls, but then she couldn't even carry the babies. She had to have her cervix sewn shut. To me, that, you know, women don't understand that that could happen. Those are consequences of abortions and, and wanting to have children after you do that, it really is not a good situation. Um, and I know that, you know, even my stepmom uh, in the 60s, she ended up, uh, she was pregnant with her eighth child and she had a blood hemorrhage or something to that effect. And the doctor told her husband, it's either your wife or your baby. And he said, well, I have seven other children that I've got to think about. I really need my wife to be here for the seven children. That's a decision that families make and this was back in the 60s. Nobody told them that they had to be pro-abortion. She was a good Catholic woman and abortion would never cross her mind. But was it her life to be there for her children? God would want that. So that's a decision that families have to make and they have to make that decision there. Um, so I'm definitely pro-life. Um, as far as the property taxes and inflation, definitely. We need to get that under control. Nobody says that we have to use the property values that have been inflated like crazy. We don't need to put our seniors out uh, without having everything they need because the property taxes are so high. I've been out door knocking, talking to seniors and it is devastating to them. They say, don't they realize we're on a fixed income? And I realize that and I think that's awful. We need to figure that out. Just because it says we need to do a sesquicentennial tax review, does that mean we have to use the values of today that are hyperinflated? doesn't make sense. We need to have common sense and that's what I want to bring to the Office of State Representative is common sense. What is good for the people? How can we help the people and still balance the budget of Ohio at the same time? It is so very important to remember the only reason why there are tax dollars is because people are out there working and we need to get everyone working. Those people that are rolling over instead of rolling out of bed and going to work, we need to get them on the roles of workers because that's why we're here. All those people that are getting Social Security, how are they going to sustain that? It's being taken away. Unfortunately, we have to somehow figure out a way to get it stopped and get people on the rolls working and doing the best for our country. Because when you have purpose, you have a positive outlook and you are moving forward and doing great things. If you don't have a purpose and you're rolling over in bed, 
everything's horrible. It crumbles. Your mental health goes bad even, to be quite honest with you. And I think COVID really showed that because isolation and isolating people really did that. Um, and it's not good. Definitely uh, very important. I did want to talk about, I have been endorsed by the Ohio Associates of Medical Freedom because I truly believe that we never want to close our schools or mask our children and tell people that they can't go to play establishments because they're not wearing a mask. It is, as we know, we live around germs every day. Um, cloth masks are not gonna work. We know that. And the Ohio Associates of Medical Freedom have said that. And that's why I was endorsed by them. I've got 100% A plus rating. Um, I've also been endorsed by um, Veterans for Trump, America First. Um, I've been endorsed by We the People Convention, Tom Z. I've been endorsed by um, the Ohio Right to Life. And I have also been endorsed by Bruce Hooley, who is a wonderful talk show host on 98.9. And um, I might have forgotten one. Oh yes, Youth, uh, oh, Youth Prosperity of Ohio. Um, that is important because as you know, our future are our children and our youth, and we need to bring them up as strong, hardworking people. And those are really important values that we need to teach. I learned those from my dad as a, you know, a dairy farmer's daughter after he retired from the military. That is so important. Work ethic is something that you really need to learn from your parents more than you need to learn from the school anyways. And that's why parental rights are so important in the schools and keeping that in, you know, parents and teachers can work together. And as a teacher, I did that all the time. So I think that's important that we continue to focus on what's important for our future and manage this with common sense. Again, that's why a grass, I'm a grassroots candidate. I'm not gonna have big lobbyists telling me what to do because I don't have that big money coming in. And I'm just the person out here talking to people, listening to people and working for them. So where do you stand on like big business like Intel? Um, oh, and uh, also another, another big topic right now is capital punishment. So, uh, you know, where do you stand on those, those issues? Well, Intel, um, Tax abatements are good for companies. Yes, that works out great. But here's the thing, we need to hold those companies accountable because guess what? They should be hiring Ohioans. If we're giving them the abatements, they should be prospering, being bringing prosperity to Ohio and Ohioans. We need to hold them accountable. We need to make sure that they know that they can't bring everybody from California and Arizona in here and take the jobs and then Ohioans don't have those jobs. We have people that are graduating with degrees and they can't even get a job. So that is really disheartening when you bring in a company that says they're getting these abatements and they are supposed to be giving jobs to Ohioans. That is important. I get it. You want the CEO and the top layer of echelon to be in charge that are from the main office. I got that. But we need to make sure that's happening. That's happening everywhere. So Fidel, they get abatements. Um, other companies that are coming in, the new Honda plant down by Jeffersonville, and how are they gonna help with the communities and bringing in prosperity for all people? As far as capital punishment is important, is it important? Yes, we need to make sure that the criminals know that if they do the crime, they're gonna do the time, or they're maybe in some cases, they're gonna have the death penalty. It's important, but I don't think that's one of my first priorities as is to worry about the death penalty. Um, I'm not sure how many people are on death row. That I, That's one thing I do need to research and find out how many are on death row and do we need to look at that? Um, because that is important to make sure that they are held accountable, just like we're held accountable for all of our actions. So I agree with that, but I think what's more important today is we care about the people and how we can help people get better, um, help them with their property taxes, help them be a, a community. And I think that's really important instead of focusing in on that. I think that um, priority might be more, you know, I think that it's important to hold them accountable, but I also know that we also need to find out why are we having people that are 
going to climb? Is it because of the inflation? Do we need to figure out how to help people find their purpose? And that might be another thing that we need to do. Common sense, again. Off camera, you told me that you were an army kiddo and you moved around a lot um, and your husband's from here. Uh, why did you decide to settle in Southern Ohio? Well, um, one of the reasons why is um, I met my husband um, in the military and uh, when we would come back here, we would come back to Circleville. Well, his parents actually lived in Asheville. Um, and we would come to Circleville and we would uh, enjoy going to Memorial Hall to the old library and spending time here with his family. And we had a few choices. My dad was in the Air Force, so he ended up back in Wisconsin. My mom, she remarried and she ended up in Missouri. And we had another choice, Ohio, where his family was. And, Family is really important to us, so we wanted to live by family. And we kept coming back to Ohio. I enjoyed it. I loved his family. I, his mom and dad are past, but um, I love them and his sister, amazing. So it is important to me to have family around. And so we decided that Ohio was the spot and um, because Wisconsin was really cold and Missouri, we were not quite sure. So Ohio fit our, our need and we kept on coming back. Um, our realtors, they probably were wondering if we ever really were gonna move here because we kept coming back and looking at houses. Um, but we're, we've been here for uh, almost 20 years and um, we own uh, rental properties. So they're, they're happy that we stayed and they're like uh, almost like parents to us as a way, in a way because they're so sweet to us. So Dan and Donna Daly are amazing realtors. Plus they were both wonderful educators as well. So um, it's very, we're very thankful for that. But um, you know, so Ohio has a sweet spot for me. Um, and uh, I, I, had, I flew the Ohio State uh, football team Buckeyes flag in Afghanistan very proudly, especially when the unit that I was with was from Iowa and they played against each other. I was not a very popular person, but I was in charge, so they were okay. They were gonna live, <laughs> but it was fun. Again, common sense and fun. And just to let you know, we are gonna have fun this Saturday from three to six. Uh, we are going to have a party with Patty at the Dry Run, uh, dry Run Farm, Dry Run Barns. Oh man, I messed it all up. But anyways, um, it is the old barns at Dry Run Farms in Williamsport. And uh, Adrian and Justin Barnes uh, have graciously allowed me to have my uh, fundraiser there. And so we are going to enjoy the beautiful land that does not have in industrial solar out there. And we're going to do a little bit of line dancing and having a lot of socializing and enjoying time together as a community and friends together. So so if, if people were interested in, in where you stand and, 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 and the things that you talked about today, where would they get more information? They can go to my website at um, patty for the number four Ohio rep .com. Um, You can also go to my Facebook page. It's Patty Hamilton for Ohio District 12. And um, I have many cards out there, uh, many posts. Um, I've posted on many different pages, so you're welcome to even call me. Um, I'm not going to announce that on here, but everybody has my number. I've been getting many calls, so I love talking to people and I appreciate um, their uh, input because we have to listen. I think that's why people should go to Columbus when they work there. That's their job is to listen to the people. And if they don't want to talk to people, then maybe they're in the wrong job. But I'm definitely a listener and I feel like that's important. So again, common sense and caring for your community is the important part of, of this job. And you're going to be on the primary, right? And that is March what? March 19th um, is the primary for the Republican primary. And also early voting starts the 21st of February. Um, make sure that you're registered by the 20th. I talked to a few people that said they needed to change their registration. They just moved to the county, so they had to get in. I said, don't forget, you got to have it done by the 20th of February. Um, and anybody that has not registered. But also, if you're gonna be 18 before November, you can vote in the primary even at age 17. So don't forget that, go in there. And they always need poll workers. I, 
I, you know, that was another passion. I've done pole working for since I got out of uh, working at the VA. I worked at the VA for a, quite a while, and uh, I've enjoyed meeting my community and all of my neighbors at the polling place. So it is very uh, fun. It's a long day, but it is definitely worthwhile. So I'm putting a plug in for the Board of Elections. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you very much. I thank you. I thank you so much for your time and I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. It's been a joy and thank you, Jeremy, for all that you do, even off camera with your fostering of children. That is amazing. So that's what we need is people that are community-based and care about others. So thank Thanks. you so much.